Hello students, we are studying chapter 5 that deals with sensation, attentional and perceptual processes of class 11 psychology. You have already gone through 4 parts and today we shall study part 5 of this chapter. This video lesson will deal with perceptual organization. We shall cover the principles of perceptual organization that involves the gestalt approach and laws and then the perceptual constancies of size, brightness and shape. You might have noticed a very interesting phenomenon now that you understand a bit about sensation and perception. Our visual field is actually a collection of different elements like points, lights, lines, colors and contours. But we see these as a complete wholes. We see them as complete objects and not as parts. For example, you say this is my cycle. You do not say these are paddles, saddle, chain, basket, carrier, seat and then all that together makes a cycle. No. A completeness, the ability to see things in their completeness and to know the objects in total is a very interesting human and even the animal capability. This is known as form perception. By definition, form perception is the process of organizing the visual field into meaningful wholes. Now you would be curious to know that how this happens. Are there any factors that facilitate or inhibit this ability of perceiving things as complete objects? like you, even the psychologists have been concerned with this question. A lot of psychologists have done many studies and experiments and tried to offer explanations of this unique ability of perceiving things as complete objects and not as discrete elements of stimuli. The most accepted explanation has been given by Gestalt psychologists. The most prominent among the Gestalt psychologists are Marx Wedheimer, Kurt Kafka and Pushkank Kohler. You can see all of them on your screen. They say that we deal with things as whole and a whole is different from the sum of its parts. So the Gestalt approach is that we perceive different stimuli not as discrete elements but as an organized whole that carries a definite form. To explain this and to give clear understanding, they have given us certain laws. Before we go to these laws, let us understand the concept of good figure or the concept of pregnancy or simplicity that our brain and cerebral system aim at. By default, our cerebral system wants to see things in pregnancy that is as simple as possible. This figure that you see on your screens, you will perceive it as five different circles rather than any other complex figures. It makes many figures if you look at it with attention. So whenever we see any complex thing, we tend to look at and perceive the most simple organization of these stimuli. This concept of pregnancy is facilitated by the concept of figure ground segmentation. You are looking at a picture on your screens. What is it that you perceive? A human eye. How are you able to detect the figure of an eye with only white, black and some texture gradients of grey being visible? You say that eye is the main figure whereas there is a background of little check boxes there. So this figure ground segmentation occurs very clearly in human mind. How do we differentiate figure from ground? A figure is known to have certain basic characteristics with relative importance to ground. Figure is a definite form whereas a ground is spread behind it. A figure is more organized with respect to the ground. There is a clear 
inner contour that outlines the figure. A figure stands out whereas the ground remains in the back and it does not stand out specifically. Also a figure appears nearer and is limited whereas the ground is unlimited. Hence we are able to differentiate the figure from the background. On your screens you will see two more examples of this. Here only with simple lines you are able to make the figure of a scenery of a river, a mountain, a hut and here a human face is very clearly perceived as against a brown background of different textures. Now that you understand the tendency of the human brain to be able to perceive a good figure using the figure background relationship to its advantage, we move to our next thing which is the principles of perceptual organization. These principles explain how different stimuli in our visual field are organized to give us meanings. Let us deal with seven of them. The first is the principle of proximity. We tend to perceive things together when they are nearer in space and time. You see a diagram on your screens. In the diagram on the right, you will say that the dots are arranged in different rows. However, on the left you will say that the dots are arranged in columns rather than saying that the dots are arranged in a square shape. That means that when these dots were closer horizontally that is on the right hand side figure you perceived them as rows and when they were closer vertically you perceived them as columns. So the principle of proximity applies here. Nearer the distance or the space Together you will perceive the shape. Here in the first figure you say that these are squares spread around. However in the second one you perceive a complete larger square rather than the smaller ones at the first instance. In this figure with different dimensions or different elements of stimuli being arranged together a figure of a tree is very well perceived by you. This means the things which are placed together will be seen as a complete whole owing to the principle of proximity. The second principle is the principle of similarity. In this diagram on your screens you will say that there are different columns and rows of circles and squares rather than saying that there is a larger rectangle. So similar objects tend to be perceived together as one. Here in figure 1 you see an eagle in a circle. Why? Because similar objects make a circle and something which is different is immediately perceived as a different stimuli by you. In the second figure, the figure on the right hand side is perceived as being different and those three on the left are seen as one whole figure. Why? Because those on the left are similar and that on the right is different from it in terms of its contour and shape. Now we come to the principle of continuity offered by the Gestalt psychologists. It says that the human eye and brain have a natural tendency to look at objects when they appear to be continuous giving a certain geometrical line or curve. This figure on your screens is those of dark and light dots. Here you will say that there is a circular line of two dots semicircles going upwards and downwards irrespective of the fact that these dots are different in their color shades. The continuity is depicted by the arrows in this picture. In this figure you will look at an alphabet H which leads to a maple leaf. So continuity tells us that things lead to one another. Hence we perceive things together when they are continuous. Another very interesting principle of Gestalt psychology that tells us how we perceive things is the principle of smallness. That means that the human brain tends to perceive things as one figures if they are smaller as against larger figures. In this diagram you will say that there is a black cross inside a white circle rather than perceiving the white cross at once. Whereas there are white and black both crosses. White one being larger is not perceived immediately by the human eye. 
these are certain different versions of the Rubin was. This is a perception which says that there are two faces and one was in between. The was is not perceived if the faces are distant. That is, lesser the distance between the faces which is reflected on the two figures on the left on the screen. The more clear is the was perceived by people. However, on the right you can see the faces are clearer because the distance between them increases. This means that smaller figures are perceived more quickly by the humans. Now we come to the principle of symmetry. Objects that are symmetrical are related and perceived together and the asymmetrical thing is perceived as the background. Here the color black tends to make a figure, not the color white. Black is a chromatic thing against an achromatic background. Hence, we see symmetry turning into figures. Now we come to the principle of surroundedness. We see things surrounded by a background. Here, you will not be able to see the word tie, which is in white. You will rather look at the figures in black as separate figures and white as a background. Why? because white is more surrounding the black figures. Now if you look at this figure closely, you will be able to detect T, I and E written in white and black is separating those alphabets. However, because white is surrounded even outside these alphabets, we tend to see the black ones as figures. Principle of closure implies that the human brain has a natural tendency to look at closed objects, objects that make figures instantly. Here there are seven brackets on your screen. What do you see? You see that there are three squares on your right and a lone figure on your left. Rather than saying that there are three inverted brackets on your left and a lone figure on your right. So whenever figures close together, then they are perceived into the principle of closure. Here, this panda is a panda for your eye and brain. Even though its contours are not very clear, there are differences left, but the human brain tends to fill into these gaps owing to the principle of closure and perceive this as a whole figure rather than parts of black color. Friends, isn't it interesting to know these principles? Isn't it intriguing to see that how we are blessed with these unique capabilities of perceiving things and objects as wholes rather than discrete elements. Apart from these principles, there are also certain other concepts that we need to know. Aren't you astonished by one simple fact? That we are in movement all day long. We keep on moving, yet we see things as stable objects. Even if I move within the classroom, your face will form different angles at my retin, retina. Despite this retinal image varying, I will be able to see your face as a single entity from all the places and angles. How is it possible? We move around and yet see stable objects. Perception of objects as relatively stable in spite of changes in stimulation of sensory receptors is known as perceptual constancy. There are three major principles which will help you understand it. Size constancy. There is a tendency for perceived size of objects to remain relatively unchanged with changes in their distance from the observer and size of the retinal image. As an object moves farther away from you, the retinal image formed in your eye gets smaller and smaller. Yet, you are able to see these objects in the same and constant size if you are familiar with them. For example, you see your friend walking down the road and you want to go near him. You call him, he stops and slowly you cover the distance of 500 meters between you and your friend. With each step that you take, the retinal image in your eye gets larger and larger. But did you see your friend as a dwarf when you were 500 meters away and the height increased as you got closer? 
No. Why? Because you were already familiar with the height of your friend. This familiarity and experience helps you maintain the size constancy despite the distance varying and also despite the size of the retinal image changing. Shape constancy is another interesting phenomenon that lets you perceive the shape of an object in a similar manner. When you look at your dinner plate from different angles, you will say that it is round from all the angles. However, when you are standing in front of it, the retinal image formed on your retina is round. And from the side, the retinal image is eclipse. And when you look at it from a distance, maybe it is seen as a single line by your retina. Still your brain tells you the correct shape each time. The retinal patterns change with the orientation of the object. Yet, the perception of shape of familiar objects remains the same. This is another wonderful gift that human beings and even animals and birds have to a certain extent. Brightness constancy. Have you noticed that a color appears to be the same if you look at it in sunlight or even in dim room light? How is it possible? The sunlight is giving a lot of light reflected upon your retina. However, as you go within the dark areas, the light reflected on your retina gets lesser. Still the color remains the same. Black remains black, white remains white and blue remains blue. This is possible because of the concept of brightness constancy. The amount of reflected light reaching our eye changes. Yet, the tendency to maintain apparent brightness constant at the different amounts of illuminations is what we call brightness constancy. Even with changing levels of illumination or brightness, the colors perceived are similar. With the little differences in shades, you might say that they change, but your brain will still tell you the correct hue. Friends, by now you are able to understand and appreciate the fact that meanings are not contained in objects or sensory reception. They are rather constructed in the brain with images emerging from principles of whole and with the help of constancies of perception. The individual differences of the perceiver also play a huge part in how the meanings are constructed. In the next and the last part, we shall deal with a very interesting concept of illusion and also see how we perceive images in three dimensions. Till then, happy learning. Thank you. Thank you.